Shalom Mishpachah Shel Elohim, that's Hebrew for peace, family of God. Good morning. We greet you in the master's self-sacrificing name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah. I am Dennis Hodges, I serve as a senior pastor here at the Church of Yeshua HaMashiach, and we thank you for joining us in worship today. We pray to God's abundant blessing be upon you and your family and all that you are called to achieve in life. Our singular, all-consuming passion is to build God's church and His kingdom here on earth. The church of Yeshua HaMashiach exists to connect people to God. We're not Jewish, but we are Messianic Gentiles. That means we're going in. Gentiles, believers of Yeshua, we have been called by Elohim to make a difference in this world to both Jew and Gentile alike. We would like to introduce people to Adonai, He's our Lord who is vibrant, joyful, powerful, and alive. And we thank God that you're here with us today. Well, we ask that you would visit our website at www.coyhm.org and you can find out everything that we have to offer. You'll find out our current location. You'll find out our events. And we are an active and loving and alive church of the, our soon coming King. So we bless you and we thank you for joining in. We welcome you to come in and listen to the sermon, listen to the sermon hymn as you are blessed today. God bless you, bless you with my prayer. Have a blessed one and stay strong in him and in the power of his might. Yeah. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for everything that you have done, are doing, and will do. Mm -hmm. May you anoint me to preach your word and may you fill all of us who are gathered here today with wisdom from above so that our faith will continue to be built upon that everlasting rock, which is you, Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. We love you, Lord, and we give you all the praise. Praying for the peace of Jerusalem. In your wonderful name, we ask it all. Amen. Amen. Prophet Daniel tells us that in the last days, knowledge would increase and many would go to and fro. That scripture has multiple applications. We know that one of the applications is that people go to and fro through all the modern technology of planes, cars, automobiles, trains. And knowledge has increased to such a level that they say that knowledge doubles every six months. Mm. Mm. But in Another application of that verse, it has to do with knowledge increasing in the word of God. All right. And many going to and fro, searching the scriptures to see what God has said because knowledge has increased. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Today, with our modern technology, even in our phones, we could just type in a key word yeah. in a Bible search and we get everything that that word says in all the scriptures. Yes. Mm -hmm. In Daniel's day, they had to get out whole Torah scrolls of individual books hmm. that weren't numbered whatsoever. And they would have to read line by line, which would be laborious, take hours, if not days. Wow. Mm -hmm. And if they even had the Torah scroll of the hmm. books that they try to look through. In the form. Right. right. Mm -hmm. But in the last days, we have this technology readily available to anyone who's thirsty and who's hungry. Mm -hmm. And I want to demonstrate how. Through this Torah teaching, Phineas, Phineas, and the covenant of peace, we're going to see God's game plan told from the beginning. Mm -hmm. oh, the right. end is always told at the beginning. Right. God can't lie. Mm -hmm. But before we get there, I want to set the stage with what this covenant of peace is all about. In Numbers 25, there was a trap that was set for the children of Israel by the prophet Balaam. Mm -hmm. The prophet Balaam was told to curse Israel by the wicked king Balak. And every time he went up to the mountain to try to curse Israel, God filled him with the Holy Spirit to bless Israel. Mm -hmm. And so after Balaam continued to bless Israel, he devised a way to get the children of Israel to sin, which was to send out the Midianite women. 
<laughs> he said, Balak, this is what you can do. You got to send these Midianite women to entice the children of Israel to commit fornication. Uh -huh. And Numbers 25 talks about that fornication that was going on because the women of Midian were enticing the children of Israel to sit down at the table with them and to worship their gods. Uh -huh. Which was a direct affront to the commandments of God saying that you're not to mix with the people. All right. And so, as the children of Israel in Numbers 25 are weeping before the tabernacle because the plague had broke out, mm -hmm. there was a brazen person named Zimri. Mm -hmm. Zimri and Cosby. Mm -hmm. And Zimri was the man of Israel, mm -hmm. and Cosby was a Midianitish woman. Mm -hmm. And they were so brazen that Zimri took Cosby into his own tent in front of everybody as they're trying to repent and to stop this plague, and they're going into the tent to fornicate uh -huh. in the sight of everyone. <laughs> and so Phineas, he stands up, he, he rises up and he sees what they're doing. So the Bible says he takes a javelin and he goes inside the tent and spears both Zimri and Cosby right through their belly, which means the sexual organs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They were engaged in fornication and they were slain right there. Mm -hmm. That's a story in and of itself of what's going to happen on the day of the Lord. <laughs> yes, sir. When Jesus Christ stands up and he goes into the tent, this world, to look for everyone who's transgressing against him and he's going to take a javelin, his arrows, his voice, hailstones and coals of fire, and he's going to fire them down upon everyone who's left behind. Mm -hmm. There's a whole lot to that, but that's just a brief taste. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Everything's right. a picture of Jesus. Yes, sir. Absolutely. And so, in Numbers 25, God said because Phineas did this thing, mm -hmm. because he acted in the place of God, because the Bible says he was zealous. Mm -hmm. Zealous is the Hebrew word kana, mm -hmm. which also means jealous. Mm -hmm. And one of the names of God is El Kana. Uh -huh. it's, right it's right there in Exodus chapter 20 in the Ten Commandments. Mm -hmm. The longest commandment, the second commandment, was he saying, I, the Lord, am a jealous God. Mm -hmm. He's known as El Kana. El Kana. Mm -hmm. And so God says, because you've done this, Phineas, in Numbers 25, verse 10 and 13, he says this. Mm -hmm. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Phineas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priest, has turned my wrath away from the children of Israel, while he was zealous for my sake among them, that I consume not the children of Israel in my jealousy. Wherefore say, behold, I give unto him my covenant of peace, and he shall have it and his seed after him, even the covenant of an everlasting priesthood, because he was zealous for his God and made an atonement for the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. So God says he was given two covenants, the covenant of peace, which is the covenant of an everlasting priesthood. What does peace mean? The covenant of Shalom. Well, Peace has a lot of meanings. Shalom has a lot of meanings, mainly safety, perfect, completeness, harmony, wholeness, health, mm -hmm. dot, 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 because there's a lot more to that. Absolutely. But God says because Phineas had done this, he was given this covenant of peace, which is the covenant of an everlasting priesthood. Therefore, both of these covenants go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. And in the Bible, when we do this going to and fro, knowledge has increased. When you type in the covenant of peace, covenant of peace in your Bible search app, you will find five different times mm -hmm. in the Old Testament where this covenant of peace is mentioned. Mm -hmm. And we're going to go through <clears throat> each of these five times to see God telling us the end from the beginning. Mm -hmm. And so five, what? Represents the number of grace. Mm -hmm. And five is the Hebrew letter ha. Hey, which means behold or look. Just like in the name of yod Hey vav Hey. Mm -hmm. Behold the hand, behold the nail. Mm -hmm. There's a revelation. Revelation always has to do with this fifth letter, hey. So five times the covenant of peace is mentioned. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a story about grace, mm -hmm. and there's going to be some type of revelation. The revelation is that God is going to tell us the end from the beginning. From the beginning. Yes, sir. Numbers 25, follow along in your handouts. Turn the page. Let's go to the first this is going to be more teaching than preaching. So let's go through this outline. Numbers 25, verses 10 through 13. 
when Phineas was given this covenant of peace, the covenant of an everlasting priesthood, God is going to tell us that this same covenant is also given to the church. Mm -hmm. Because Israel in Exodus chapter 19 was said by God that you are going to be a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words that you are to speak to the Israelites. So God's intention was for the whole nation to be a kingdom of priests. Mm -hmm. To receive this covenant of peace, which is the covenant of an everlasting priesthood. Mm -hmm. Likewise, the church is also said to be a royal priesthood, a okay. holy nation. Revelation chapter 1 tells us when John is writing, verse 4, John to the seven churches that are in Asia, grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come. Mm -hmm. And from the seven spirits who are before his throne and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead and the ruler of the kings on earth. Mm -hmm. To him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood and made us a kingdom priest to his God and father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Mm -hmm. So the priesthood is not only for Israel, but it's also for the church. We have a royal priesthood. Therefore, we are grafted into this covenant of peace, this covenant of everlasting priesthood by faith in Jesus Christ. Hmm. But note this. When Phinehas was given this covenant of peace, Phinehas was also a Jew and a Gentile. Mm -hmm. Look at this. Okay. Note that Phinehas, to whom the covenant of peace and the covenant of an everlasting priesthood was first given to was both a Jew and a Gentile. In Exodus chapter 6, verse 25, mm -hmm. it says this. Eleazar, Aaron's son, took as wife one of the daughters of Putiel, mm -hmm. and she bore him Phinehas. Mm -hmm. These are the heads of the father's houses of the Levites by their clans. Mm -hmm. Putiel is the only time you're going to see that name right there. Mm -hmm. In Exodus 6, verse 25. The Hebrew sages said that Putiel is none other than the priest of Midian, Jethro. All right. Uh. Jethro has seven other names. Uh. Rehuel, Jethro, Jethro, Hobab, Heber, Kenai, and Putiel. Jethro was the same priest of Midian that Moses went to yes, sir. to get his Gentile wife. Mm -hmm. It's always the story of a Jew marrying a Gentile. Mm -hmm. And through Eleazar, Aaron's son, mm -hmm. Eleazar gets Jethro's, one of Jethro's daughters, one of their descendants, and he marries a Gentile. Mm -hmm. And their offspring is Phinehas, who is both Jew and Gentile. All right. Uh -huh. It's the same story told over and over again because Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. after the order of Melchizedek, mm -hmm. whose priesthood supersedes that of Levi, has grafted us in mm -hmm. by faith in his name. And what does he do? He goes after the Gentile mm -hmm. because the Jews rejected him. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, He's absolutely. going after a Gentile bride. Yes, sir. The Gentiles are us. Uh -huh. He's the Jewish man, uh -huh. and we're one with him, Jew yeah. and Gentile yeah. together. Yeah. 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 Tell it. Yeah. Come yeah. on, Pastor. Yes. Yeah. You see? Make it simple. Yeah. Yes, sir. The mm -hmm. Bible says in Romans chapter 5, verse 1, therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. The covenant of peace. All right. That covenant of peace, which is his peace made on the cross through his shed blood, mm -hmm. brings us into the covenant of an everlasting priesthood. The church is a kingdom of priests. That's it. Colossians chapter 1, verses 19 through 20 tells us this. For in him... All the fullness of God was pleased to dwell in him and through him to reconcile to himself all things, Jew or Gentile, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. All right. So if you're Jew or Gentile, you can be grafted in. You can receive this covenant of peace, of safety, of perfect, of completeness, of harmony, of wholeness, of health, of mm -hmm. prosperity. Mm -hmm. When you put your faith in Jesus Christ. By your son. And the right. result is the covenant of an everlasting priesthood. Everlasting. We are a kingdom of priests. That's it. And told from the beginning. Mm -hmm. So that's the setup. The first time the covenant of peace is mentioned in Numbers 25, verses 10 through 13. Mm -hmm. So let's go to example number two. The second time is mentioned. And so understand, <laughs> we have to understand the total framework of how the end time plan is going to work out. Mm -hmm. Because... 
This pattern is, is seen throughout the scriptures. The first thing that's going to happen is God is calling out this Gentile bride. Numbers 25, verses 10 through 13. And the next event that's going to happen is the rapture. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Number two is where the rapture, we see the rapture in Isaiah 54. Oh. Isaiah 54. So the covenant of peace, let me read the covenant of peace first. We find that in verse 10. Isaiah 54, verse 10 says this. For the mountains may depart and the hills be removed, but my steadfast love shall not depart from you. Mm. And my covenant of peace shall not be removed, says the Lord, who has compassion on you. Mm. So the context of Isaiah 54 is the new song that is sung. Hallelujah. Isaiah 54, verse 1, the first verse. Sing, O barren, you who did not bear. Break forth into singing and cry aloud, you who have not been in labor. For the children of the desolate one will be more than the children of her who is married, says the Lord. Now understand the context. The chapter before is Isaiah 53, the suffering servant chapter, where it talks about Jesus Christ and his work that he would accomplish on behalf of all of humanity. That chapter is the number one stumbling block for the Jews. Mm -hmm. They can't see it. And so right after Isaiah 53 is mentioned, the next verse, Isaiah 54, verse 1, is this. Mm -hmm. Sing, O barren, sing aloud. Mm -hmm. There's a song to be sung if you know the suffering servant of Isaiah 53. The result is supposed to be joy. It's supposed to be singing. Yes. But it's saying, sing, O barren one, mm -hmm. you who did not bear. The church, we didn't bear anything. We were birthed, hallelujah. Yes, sir. Israel gave birth to the church. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ said salvation is of the Jews. Yes, sir. Salvation came because of Israel. Israel is the one who's in labor to give birth to us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now look at this. Right. Paul the apostle quotes in the book of Galatians chapter 4. He quotes Isaiah 54 verse 1. Understand, the book of Galatians is written to Gentile believers in Galatia. Mm -hmm. Paul, who is a Jew, is laboring in birth to form these Gentile believers into the image of Christ Jesus. He says such in verse 19. Galatians chapter 4, verse 19. My little children, uh -huh. for whom I labor in birth again until Christ is formed in you. All right. Paul is a Jew. He's saying that he's in labor. He's in labor to give birth to this Gentile church. Mm -hmm. We, as Gentiles, are the ones being birthed. We see it in Revelation. Revelation chapter 12, verses 1 through 5, talks about the final manifestation when the birth actually takes place. Revelation chapter 12, verses 1 through 5. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, mm. a woman clothed with the sun, right. and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of 12 stars. Right. And she, being with child, cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. All so right. there's this woman in labor. That woman is Israel. Now yes. Is, who appears? And this woman, Israel, who's in labor with this child, who appears? Verse 3. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. Mm -hmm. And behold, a great red dragon <laughs> having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his head. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast it to the earth. My Lord. And the dragon stood before the woman who was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. And she brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. <laughs> caught up is the word harpoxo rapture. Mm -hmm. The it. man child is us. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ is the head. We are the body. Mm -hmm. The dragon is trying to stand before the woman, which is Israel, to devour this child before it's born. But what did Jesus Christ say? Jesus Christ said, on this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail. Yes, sir. <laughs> that is why when the dragon tries to devour this man child, somehow, some way, when the rapture happens, he can't get to the man child. Mm -hmm. Because we escape. The rapture is an escape. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We escape out of the clutches of the dragon. Yeah, but yeah. if you continue in Revelation, you see that the woman is left behind. Mm. That woman is Israel. Mm -hmm. And the woman goes into the wilderness to be protected from the face of the dragon. Mm -hmm. You've got to read that on your own. Mm -hmm. but look at this. 
Galatians, back to Galatians, where Paul the Apostle quotes Isaiah 54. Mm -hmm. He quotes this. Paul the Apostle uses the analogy of an allegory of two covenants. Mm -hmm. He says that there's a bondwoman and a free woman. All right. The bondwoman represents the old covenant, the law, which is Hagar. But the free woman represents Sarah, mm. the children of promise. And God, through Paul, uses this analogy to compare the two Jerusalems. The one that's in bondage is the Jerusalem on this earth, mm. over there in Israel, those who still want to serve under the law. But then Paul says there's a heavenly Jerusalem, mm -hmm. which is the mother of us all, from which all the children of the promise are citizens of. Mm -hmm. This is why Paul quotes Isaiah 54, verse 1, because he's talking about the church. Okay. We are citizens of the heavenly Jerusalem, because when the rapture happens, where do we go? We go to the new Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And because we go to the new Jerusalem, because we were the barren one, we didn't bear anything. Mm -hmm. We're the one that are singing. We're rejoicing. We didn't bring anything forth. Israel birthed us. We're caught up out of here. We're the result yes, sir. Yes, of the sir. birthing that Israel talk, has talk, done. Preacher. And so when we are caught up, we go to the new Jerusalem. And the covenant of peace is mentioned in Isaiah 54, verse 10. And look at Isaiah 54, 11 and 12. Let's read it. You get a picture of the new Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Look at this. This is amazing. Isaiah 54, verse 10. It's a whole lot, but hey, you got to cover a lot of ground. Hallelujah. Amen. Mm -hmm. Isaiah 54, verse 10. For the mountains shall depart and the hills be removed, but my kindness shall not depart from you, nor shall my covenant of peace be removed from you, says the Lord who has mercy on you. There goes the covenant of peace. And then look at this, verse 11 and 12. It's the new Jerusalem. O oh, you afflicted one, toss the tempest and not comforted. Behold, I will lay your stones with colorful gems and lay your foundations with sapphires. Mm -hmm. I will make your pinnacles of rubies, your gates of crystal, and all your walls of precious stones. Oh, yes, sir. If you read the description of the New Jerusalem, you know that one of the foundations is sapphire. Mm -hmm. Go to Revelation chapter 21. Right, right. There you go. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. Look at this. That's right. He's describing the New Jerusalem. All right. Revelation chapter 22. Look at this. Revelation chapter 22, verse 9. I'm sorry, verse uh, Revelation 21, verse 9. Then one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls filled with the seven last plagues came to me and talked with me, saying, Come, I will show you the bride. The Lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me the great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God, having the glory of God. Her light was like a most <laughs> precious stone, like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. We just read that in Isaiah 54. Mm -hmm. Now jump down to the foundations. The foundations in verse 19. The foundations of the wall of the city were adorned with all kinds of precious stones. The first foundation was jasper. The second, sapphire. Mm -hmm. In Isaiah 54, verses 11 and 12, it talks about the new Jerusalem and all the colorful gems, the rubies, the crystal, the foundation of sapphire, because that sapphire is also the sea of glass. Yes, sir. <laughs> Whenever God appears, like in Exodus 25, when he appeared on the top of the mountain, he invited the 70 elders to come up. Mm -hmm. They said that they saw the... Clearness of heaven like a sapphire stone. Mm -hmm. And upon the sapphire stone sat one on the throne. Yes, sir. In Ezekiel also, when the cherubims carry the throne of God, it says above Jesus. the cherubim's head is a sapphire pavement. Mm -hmm. And upon that pavement is a throne. Mm -hmm. That sapphire represents the sea of glass as well. And also one of the foundations of the new Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Seen right there in Isaiah 54 after he talks about the covenant of peace. And telling those who haven't been in labor to sing. Those who haven't bore anything to sing because you're going to be caught up out of here. Mm -hmm. You're the first to go into the new Jerusalem. What does the Bible say? The last, last will, be, will first, be first. And the first will be the last. first will be last. Come on now. Mark. We were the ones who are Come last. We're the Gentiles. Come on we now. haven't bore anything. But God says you're going to be the first. We're the first to go over to the new Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. We escaped from the time of Jacob's trouble. Mm -hmm. 
You see that? Yes, sir. God is just so good. Yes, he and is. And we have the covenant of peace. Yes, sir. Which is the covenant of an everlasting priesthood because of Jesus Christ. That's it. That's the only way that we're going to be caught up out of here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you know Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have to be with him and one in him. Hallelujah. Come on now. Mm hmm. It's a lot to it, but I'm just giving you a brief snapshot. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, the third down. point. Ezekiel 34. Now, there's going to be people left behind. There's going to be people left behind after we get caught up. So the next time that we read about the covenant of peace, the third time it's mentioned is in Ezekiel 34. And it talks about the great tribulation and the thousand-year reign of Christ. Uh -huh. It's amazing. Only God could do something like this. That's right. Only God. So let's read the covenant of peace in Ezekiel 34, verse 25. Okay. And I will make with them a covenant of peace and will cause the evil beast to cease out of the land. And they shall dwell safely in the wilderness and sleep in the woods. Mm -hmm. Okay, now let's go to the first verse of Ezekiel 34. Mm -hmm. Ezekiel 34 gives us the context of what God is talking about. Ezekiel 34 verse 1 says this, And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. All right. Prophesy and say unto them, Thus says the Lord God unto the shepherds, Woe be to the shepherds of Israel that do feed themselves. Not Should only. not the shepherds feed the flocks? That's it. Wow. There's going to be people left behind on the earth. And those people who are left behind are going to be under the rule of the worthless shepherd. The worthless shepherd is found in Zechariah chapter 11, verse 17. Look at it. Read it. Woe to the worthless shepherd who leaves the flock. Mm. A sword shall be against his arm and against his right hand, his right eye. His arm shall be completely withered and his right eye shall be totally blinded. My That's Lord. the Antichrist. Wow. He's the worthless shepherd. Yeah. And in the context of the order of end times events, once we get taken to the New Jerusalem, there's going to be people left behind and there's going to be worthless shepherds. The chief of the worthless shepherds is the Antichrist. Uh -huh. And he is going to misguide the flock. God says, woe to those shepherds. But that's not all. Look what else he says he's going to do during this time. God, who is the good shepherd, yeah, yeah. will search out his sheep during this time. Mm -hmm. And it's known as the cloudy and dark day. Mm -hmm. Ezekiel 34, verses 11 through 12. Look at this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I, even I, will both search my sheep and seek them out. Mm -hmm. As a shepherd seeks out his flock in the day that he is among the sheep that are scattered, mm -hmm. so will I seek out my sheep and will deliver them out of all places where they have been scattered in the cloudy and dark day. Yeah, yeah, the right. cloudy and dark day at the time of Jacob's trouble. Mm -hmm. It's known as the day of the Lord, a day of clouds, the day of darkness. Mm -hmm. This is God who is going to be looking for those who are left behind that are part of his flock. Mm -hmm. And what's he going to do? He's going to separate the sheep from the goats. From the goats. Look at this. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Ezekiel 34, verse 17. And as for you, O my flock, he's talking about the sheep. Thus saith the Lord God, behold, I will judge between cattle and cattle. Mm. Between the rams and the he goats. That's God separating the rebels from the good sheep. He yes. talks about it in Matthew 25. Yes. When he sits upon the throne of his glory. And he has the sheep on his right hand and his goats on the left. And as the good shepherd, he's going to divide the sheep from the goats. Amen. This is what's happening. This is what's happening when everybody's left behind. It has to go through the great tribulation. It's the final separation. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, look at this. Go on, the covenant of peace. <laughs> Ezekiel 34, 25 and 26. Mm -hmm. So now God has come back. He's come back, the second coming. Mm -hmm. Look at the covenant of peace. And I will make with them a covenant of peace and will cause the evil beast to cease out of the land. Mm -hmm. Notice the plural. It says beast. Mm -hmm. The book of Revelation chapter 13 tells us that there's two beasts. The first beast is the Antichrist. The second beast is the false prophet. When this covenant of peace comes at the second coming for those who are on the earth, he's going to cause the evil beast to cease. He's going to destroy the Antichrist and the false prophet. They're known as the two beasts. Yes, sir. You see? Preach. And then what's going to happen? And they shall build safety. It's going to be safety now. Mm -hmm. God has come to set up his kingdom and sleep in the woods. And I will make 
them and the places round about my hill a blessing. Mm -hmm. And I will cause the shower to come down in his season. There shall be showers of blessing. This is a hint at what God says in the book of Zechariah. When Jesus Christ comes and God is now tabernacling upon the earth, God says, you got to come up to this feast. Because if you don't come up, these showers are going to come upon your land. Mm -hmm. There's not going to be any rain. Mm -hmm. If you don't come during this thousand year reign, when Jesus Christ is sitting on the throne in Jerusalem, the plague is not going to have any rain, any showers of blessing upon your land. Mm -hmm. God says that the showers of blessing are going to come when he comes down. Mm -hmm. right, that's right. To establish his kingdom. I pray that you're getting this. Mm -hmm. You see? And so what happens after that? Okay, after the thousand year reign, mm -hmm. then we get to the fourth mention of the covenant of peace. After the thousand year reign, we go into eternity and God dwells with man forever. Mm -hmm. Look at this. Ezekiel 37, this amazes me. <laughs> yes, it is. I mean, this is amazing to me. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just so much. Mm -hmm. And we're yeah. looking at this from English. Yeah. If we can understand this from Hebrew. Yes, sir. I mean, your yeah. mind would explode. Yes, sir. Yes, I mean, your mind would explode. If we can understand this from the Hebrew, like we know how to read Hebrew like we do English. Yes. Yeah. Know the gematria, the, the, the pictures, the yes. words. It's just yes. so much. <laughs> yes, sir. Just the little that he shows us, it's just yeah. like, wow. Yeah. Yes, sir. But look at the revelation from English. Yes. In the English language, it's like, wow. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. It's Absolutely. crazy to me. Yes, sir. God is just so good. Okay, it's so. a great praise. Yeah, amen. Mm -hmm. Ezekiel 37. Look at this. So Ezekiel 37 has to do with the valley of dry bones. Mm -hmm. Oh, boy. And it yeah. talks about the resurrection of the whole house yeah, yeah, yeah. of Israel. Let's read mm -hmm. that. Verse 11. Yeah. Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Right. Behold, uh -huh. they say our bones are dried and our hope is lost. We are cut off for our parts. Okay, now let me just be one real quick. You, we have to understand that there's multiple levels of application that would never stray away from the truth of what God is going to do. Mm -hmm. We know that this valley of dry bones represents the restoration that we're seeing today. Mm -hmm. That's the first part, but there's multiple levels to what God is saying. You see, we have to have his mind to understand. We can't put him in a box. That's right. I know. When you don't put him in a box and you try to understand the deeper things, you can see these things. Yes, sir. You see, so God is telling us a different picture based upon the covenant of peace. That's the point. We're following this covenant of peace to see God's prophetic game plan work out. And he's using this to tell us the story that we already know to be true. Yes, sir. The rapture's going to happen. There's going to be people left behind. And then eternity's going to come. Right. So what's going to happen? After a thousand year reign, there's going to be a resurrection. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. The whole house of Israel is resurrected, right? Mm -hmm. Now look at this. Then there's going to be one nation and one king forever. Uh, okay? Yeah, Verse 22, right. Ezekiel right. 37. And I will make them one nation mm -hmm. in the land upon the mountains of Israel. Mm -hmm. And one king shall be king to them all. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And they shall no more ever be two nations. My Lord. Neither shall they be divided into two kingdoms any more at all. Mm -hmm. Neither shall they defile themselves any more with their idols. Mm -hmm. This is the this, this is when God makes everything right. Yes, sir. There's no more yes, after this. No, no, no. God told us this in, in the book of John. Mm -hmm. John chapter 10, he said, And other sheep I have which are not of this fold, us. Mm -hmm. Them also I must bring, and they will hear my voice, and there will be one flock mm -hmm. and one shepherd. Yes, sir. It's the same story, Old Testament, New Testament. That's it. You see? In one. <laughs> now look at this. Now let's get to the covenant of peace. In Ezekiel 37, it says, uh, verse uh, 26, this is the covenant of peace. Moreover, I will make a covenant of peace with them. It shall be an everlasting covenant with them, and I will place them and multiply them and will set my sanctuary in the midst of them forevermore. Mm -hmm. This is God dwelling with mankind forever. Mm -hmm. You see, but look at the words, the Hebrew that word that he uses. He uses the word sanctuary, which is mikdash, and he also uses the word tabernacle, which is mishkan. Uh -huh. okay. He doesn't use the word hekal, which is temple. All right. Because when we know the end of the book in the book of Revelation, the book of Revelation says that when this day comes, I saw no, I saw no temple. Yes, sir. Therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. Mm -hmm. So God will not use the word for temple, hey, call, 
in this passage because God is the Jesus of truth. Yes, sir. Same yesterday, today, today and forever. And forever. Yes, he used sir. Mishkan and Mikdash yes, sir. in order to describe his dwelling with us forever. Yes, sir. God will dwell with men, but there will be no temple. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's amazing yes, to yes, me. Sir. It's just these little details the small that bring ones. everything yes, out. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Tage. That's eternity. Mm -hmm. That's our hope, my friend. This is what we're looking for, to when God dwells with us. Mm -hmm. What are we living for? We're living to be with Him. That's it. That's all. That's it. Nothing else matters. Nothing else matters. And God said one day it's going to be a reality. Yeah. You either believe it or you don't. Right. And if you don't believe it, that's on you. That's yeah. right. That's right. We know what we're going to be at. Right. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, sir. 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 Yes, you want to be part of this, man. You don't want to be out. You don't want to be outside the gate. That's it. You already know what's outside the gate. That's it. Okay, so the final one. The final one, Malachi chapter 2. God tells us, he always gives us a final warning. You're right. So Malachi is what? The last book of the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. This is the last time this covenant of peace is mentioned. And let's read the whole section. Come on now. Malachi chapter 2, verse 1. And now, O ye priests. Mm. He's talking to the priest. <laughs> We've been talking about this priest all the time. Mm -hmm. Okay, so he's giving, he's giving a warning because if you're grafted in, God's intention is for everyone to be a priest. Right. Yeah, right. That's his intention for all of humanity, for us to all be priests. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because the law of God is supposed to be they on our mouth. Yes, sir. You shall meditate on this law day and day night. It shall night. not depart out of your mouth. That's what right. The priest is the messenger of the yes, Lord. Yes, sir. Am I right or wrong? You're right. You're right. Absolutely right. God wants us to all be priests. Kingdom so of priests. Priest. Kingdom of priests. Kingdom of priests. That's it. Mm -hmm. And now, this is the final warning in the final book of the Old Testament. And now, O ye priest, this commandment is for you. Mm -hmm. If you will not hear. You see, God is good. Mm -hmm. he, I mean, look at the chance after chance he gives it. Like that yeah. church said on, on the Bible study was that. Just look at me. I mean... <laughs> The chance after chance he just gives must, uh, us as individuals, it just yes. amazes. Yes. It amazes us about the grace of God, the patience of God. Yes. But there does come a limit. Yes. Right. Yeah. There yes. does come a limit. Yeah. Right. Yeah. He will not yeah. strive with us forever. That's right. That's right. And he says right here, if you will not hear. Yeah, if he gets sick and tired of foolishness too. Yeah. yeah. My God. Yeah. And if you will not lay it to heart Ooh. to give glory unto my yeah. man, saith the Lord of hosts. Yeah. I will even send a curse upon you. Whoa. Mm -hmm. That curse is the lake of fire. This is, this, uh. is the final, this is the final warning. The ultimate curse is separation from God forever. That's wow. it. There's no other curse greater than that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The separation from God forever is the ultimate curse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that curse is going to be meted out in the lake of fire forever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's keep on reading it. Mm -hmm. And I will curse your blessings. Yea, I have cursed them already. Because you do not lay it to heart. Wow. Behold, I will corrupt your seed and spread dung upon your faces. Mm, and wow. Your solemn feast, and one shall take you away with it. And you shall know that I have sent this commandment unto you, that my covenant might be with Levi, saith the Lord of hosts. My covenant was with him of life and peace. Mm -hmm. And I gave them to him for fear with where he feared me and was afraid before my name. Mm -hmm. The law of truth was in his mouth, and iniquity was not found in his lips. He walked with me in peace and equity and did turn many away from iniquity. Mm -hmm. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge uh -huh. and they should seek the law at his mouth. For he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. Yeah. But you are departed out of the way. You have caused many to stumble at the law. Uh -huh. You have corrupted the covenant of Levi, wow. saith the Lord of hosts. Therefore have I also made you contemptible and base before all the people. According as you have not kept my ways, but have been partial in the law. You see, if you just obey God somewhat, you're in total disobedience. Mm -hmm. Partial obedience is full disobedience. Mm -hmm. It's the example with Paul. Remember, Paul was told to kill them all. Mm -hmm. And what did Paul do? He said, well, I saved King Ahab, Agag the lion. So, yeah. mm -hmm. God said to kill everyone. Mm -hmm. And because of that, what did, what did what did God say to Paul? You disobey. Mm -hmm. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Mm -hmm. You got to kill them all. Show them no mercy. Mm -hmm. God knows everything. And this is applicable to all of us. Yeah. We have to obey him. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. He says, 
You can't be partial in this. You can't have in one foot and one foot. God says you're lukewarm. The church of Laodicea. Right, yeah. He said if you have one foot here, one foot here, I'm going to spill you out of my mouth. That's yes. what God said. Yes, uh, I mean, you either believe what God says or you. That's all he was. Yeah. Right. We got free will. That's right. Mm -hmm. So we have to be obedient to what God says. And what God says is if you love me. Yeah. Do, do, keep my keep commandments. My Come on. Simple as that. Love him with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. Yes, sir. Like you said, God cares about what we do with people. Mm -hmm. How you treat your neighbor. Mm -hmm. How can you say you love God at one mouth and at your other mouth you're cursing your neighbor? Yeah. It don't work like that. It don't work like that. We have to be men and women of integrity mm -hmm. everywhere we go because the Spirit of God is in us. Mm -hmm. We have the covenant of peace, and we're priests. Therefore, the knowledge of the law is on our lips. Yes, sir. And we go out there and we speak the truth, regardless yes. of what anybody yes, says. Yes, sir. Yeah. Absolutely. Regardless of what anybody says. Who cares if you don't believe? I'm telling you what Jesus said. Yes, sir. Yeah. God has given us the spirit of boldness. Yes, sir. The Bible says the righteous are bold as a lion, but the wicked flee when no one is pursuing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> you gotta stand on that rock. You gotta right. stand on the rock. Yes, Regardless, sir. like you said, Pastor, last night. Regardless of if, if somebody came here with a gun in my head to denounce Jesus Christ, yes, I will not. not so help us, Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, right. you gotta, you gotta, the Bible says you gotta know this. These things I have written to you so that you can know that you have eternal life. Yes. Mm -hmm. When you know that you got eternal life, what can come against you? No. Right. What can stop you, Pastor Absolutely. Church? Absolutely. You got the King of all kings inside of you. Yes, sir. Right. Who can come against you? What can separate you from the love of God? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You got to know him. You got to yada. You got to know. You got to know him. You got to know him. And when you know him, these things are settled. There's no debate. God is coming. He's the King forever. Yes, right. That's it. That's all. That's right. That's right. That's right. Amen, Pastor. That's it. That's it. Hallelujah. 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 Bless your heart, man. You know what? The world speaks of doom and gloom. The world runs in panic and fear. But we as kingdom priests, we as we as heirs and co-heirs to the kingdom, Hallelujah. we have a covenant of shalom. Hallelujah. We have that. We have that. We don't worry. We have no fear. We have no nothing. And we take care of the sojourners. Mm -hmm. You know, it blessed my heart today to be able to go out in this community, this church. Now, I live in Spring Valley, so I don't live in Lemon Grove. But the church that I serve as the under-shepherd of the flock is in the city of Lemon Grove. And Lemon Grove community is feeding people all the way up till December. So I was able to represent the church of Yeshua HaMashiach to feed over 250 people. Nice. As they drove up and we gave them a whole lot of food. The San Diego Food Bank provided food. So that's blessing straight. I don't know none of these people. But I had, I had our cards, I had our cards and I put them in the bag. So the mayor, she says, well, Pastor, you, you need to take them. You, need, you can't put the cards in the bag. I said, why not? He said, well, there's separation between church and state. I said, well, you know what, you the mayor, I'm going to honor what you're saying, but guess what? I'm going to put it right here in their trunk. <laughs> so when they get the food, they'll see the card right there yeah, in their trunk. Right. So the bottom line is you, there's, a way, there's a way to work around some things. Because the enemy does not want us, as the church, to project nothing regarding the word of God. Right. He wants us to be afraid and shut up and don't say nothing and all that. And, and then the reason that I locked these doors, because there's a lady that came in here and she just slung over the door and said, y'all in violation, you ain't supposed to be here. I sent my armor bear out there to talk to her. I'm calling the police. I said, I'm calling. They came, I dealt with them. Then the night they're talking about it's against the law to sing in church. Oh, please. Oh, yeah, they start they, they, oh, they, they going crazy with it. Yes. So these doors will remain locked and when you go out, but you can open them as you go. Gorgeous. But the bottom line that's, is that's crazy. He, the world is tripping. Yeah, that's crazy. I ain't part of the trip. I have the covenant of peace. Mm -hmm. Safety, perfect, completeness, harmony, wholeness, and health. Hallelujah. And as we project that, 
with holy boldness and confidence and let the world know who we stand for, Hallelujah. they either get it or they don't. Mm -hmm. Now, I hope and pray that you heard something from Pastor Smith. He eloquently broke down this Numbers chapter 25. And, 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 and Phineas also means Negro. He was a dark-skinned dark -skinned gentleman, part of our people. Mm. Numbers 25, Isaiah 54, Isaiah 54 and 10. Read that again. Read that again, because that piece right there, it talks about, for the mountains shall depart and the hills be removed, but my kindness shall not depart from you, nor shall my covenant of peace be removed, says the Lord, who has mercy on you. Amen. So he has mercy on us all. Yeah. And, 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 and the world, they're going to be running and hiding. Well, they better get used to this sound and they better come on in because the clock is ticking. And if he don't come back this fall, look for him next fall. So the bottom line is, y'all need to get with this out here in cyberspace. Call us if you need some help, 619-724-6226. Email me at pastorhodges1955 at gmail.com. We're here to help you. We're here to love on you because he loved on us. He gave us life more abundantly, and we're just here to help you have that same boldness in your position of eternal life. We have. We, we don't think so, if so, maybe so. We know that we have eternal life. So my prayer for you is that you know the same. We thank you for tuning in. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May his countenance and his face shine upon you. May he be gracious unto you, show you favor, and grant you peace. And now when the hymn was able to keep you from falling, may he continue to lift you up and send you out to complete the work that he has started in you according to Philippians 1 and 6. Dismiss us now from this place, never from your awesome sight. Daddy, we thank you for another opportunity that we had a great study here on this Shabbat today, and we ask now that you would continue to move within us and stir up that gift within us that we'll go out and share what we've learned here today. We love you and praise you in Yeshua's name. I pray and ask it all. We ask that you would bless this Kaddish meal as well. Amen. And he said, I hope and pray that you enjoyed the message today. We're here to be effective in this world in which we live. The Lord has appointed us for such a time as this, and I pray that you learn something from the Word of God, that you would observe this Word, that you would uh, interpret the Word, that you would verify the Word, and then that you would apply the Word. That is the most important factor here. We must make the Word an application to our lives. So again, thank you for joining in. And go out and make it a God-filled day, because what kind of day would it be if it was not God-filled? God, bless you, bless you, is my prayer. Stay strong in Him and in the power of His mind.